Greetings everyone, KV here, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon White Version. In the last episode, we tracked down all of the members of the Seven Sages, or to be more precise, six, because we don't know our Gaesis is. He might be off plotting something, who knows. But the other six were finally handed over to Officer Looker. We did some more exploration. Wrong button, as always. We did some more exploration here on Route 15, or 14. 14, I'm right. We checked out the Abundant Shrine. I did some more surfing around here, fought some trainers and whatnot. Uh, we also, I believe, last time took a look at what was inside Miss Shelton Cave, which was the Pokemon called Balion. Pretty cool stuff there. And we also went to our final city in the Innova region, the White Forest, which is uh, massive and can become even more crazy should we actually, you know, have... Uh, more uh, people invited in from black version. That was a weird way to say that, but that is what's going on. I do like the little leaves that are flowing through. That looks, it's a nice little touch to that. Really, very cool. I like this kind of being the final city you find in the Nova region. It's a very cool area. Black City in Pokemon Black and Pokemon Black 2 is also fairly cool as well, so pick your like. Do you prefer nature or do you prefer the city life? Up to you. I just picked a base on I like Zach Crumb better than the rest of <laughs> At least that's how I went initially when I picked this game up, and White's the one I'm familiar with, so there you go. So, with that all said, what is left for us to do? Well, there are two major things I want to try to tackle in this episode, and they all deal with... Legends! In, like, a way or sort of, kind of, whatever, you know. So, the first thing we're going to do is go to an area we have not yet visited, or at least not uh, fully taken a look at. It'll be the very last area we'll look at in the game, actually, so I hope you're ready for this, because it's actually one of the hardest areas in the game, with Pokémon in the wild at level 65, but luckily we're going to be putting repels on, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. We, of course, are going to take a look at, for realsies, the Giant Chasm. Or Chasm. I don't know how you should pronounce that word. You know, future me, you want to get, like, a pronunciation guide up or something like that. I mean, maybe you don't want to and stuff, but yeah. Also, happy Sun and Moon release day! I hope you're all enjoying it. I'm recording this in advance, obviously, so I have not played the game yet. Or, I mean, I've played the demo, but I haven't played, like, the full game yet, so I hope you are enjoying it. If you're watching this video while also, uh, playing Pokemon Sun and Moon, I'm glad you're enjoying both, so thank you very much. Anyways, we're gonna put on our Max Repel. I do not believe there are any, um, trainers inside this cave. So, we'll just kind of do some exploration and then get to the main event of what I wanted to go here in the first place. Because it actually kind of ties into the lore of the whole Unova region. And for that reason, we put Sabo in front, and uh, just trust me on that. And yeah, our team's gotten pretty dang powerful, I'm very happy about that, so that's uh, all good in the neighborhood. And, uh, this is like a maze here. Is there a... no? Okay. So it's just gonna be us kind of wandering around for a bit, you know, just follow... Do you feel like Mike was asking at the end of Monsters, Inc.? Follow the sweet sensations of my... What, of, well, he said like some like something really romantical about his voice. Um, wow, it's that easy? Well, I want to explore up here first. The way we need to go is down there, but I want to explore up here first. So let's first check out... Looks like there's some rocks we can use Rock Smash for, but I do not... I just got done with the move of the leader and everything. I do not want to teach Rock Smash to anyone. So, we're not going to bother with that. We're going to go further on here. Let's just... Oh! Look, like we got some stuff here. What do we got? Ah, oh, Comet Shard! I don't know what that does. Let me check that out, actually. What does this do? What's Comet Shard do? It's not a Leaf Stone, that's for sure. I wish there was an easier way to scroll up through the items. That's been kind of the... Anytime I accidentally go over like that, it's because I'm like, oh yeah, what if you just you like... Because in the Pokedex you can do that, but I guess not. A Comet Shard which fell to the ground when a Comet approached. A Maniac will buy... Ooh. This actually ties into the lore, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Because this cave houses a very powerful legendary. I mean, why else would you have some kind of crazy cave in this post-game anyways? A tiny mushroom. I don't know why it's on a rock, but, you know, whatever. 
It is said that... Actually, let's check it. Does it say anything? Legends say if you approach this big chasm, the vaster surely follow. Okay, well, you know... So you remember how everyone in Lakinosa Town was really, like, scared of going to the giant chasm and was afraid to come out at night? Well, the story goes that eons ago, before the Unova, you, you know, this Unova? The, the Unova Rogen. It's, it's the new Unova, Unova. Hashtag Unova. Um, before the Unova region came into being, before the whole fight with Zekrom and Reshiram happened back in the past, supposedly a Pokemon fell from the sky in a meteor and it crash-landed at this site, and created this giant chasm that we stand in now. And supposedly, this is where Reshiram and Zekrom were originally found. Which seems odd. Why, if they both, like, are supposed to be at, e at odds of each other, why are they f why are they both found here? I mean, if we go back to a few episodes, like, ten episodes back, they actually they kind of discuss that Reshiram and Zekrom uh, are not separate by default. Fault, if that is any indication to you. And are you just gonna... Can you leave, please? Can you leave? I want to get that. I would really like that, but you're in the way. I don't I don't want to talk to you. I really don't want to talk to you. Just keep on doing. Alright, well, we'll just follow the dowsing machine for now. That being said, if Reshiram and Zekrom were once supposedly the same being, what was that being like? And screw it. Oh, never mind. It, it wasn't even, it was an item. Star piece, okay, that's not, there's one thing I really want here, and this is actually going to tie in it to the whole lore and the Pokemon here and yada yada yada. Am I just not checking the right spots? Hmm... Oh, I was. I'm a dumb butt. It's in a. It's it's further in. Okay, never mind. Well, it's it's. <laughs> I really want it because it's it's a TM, and uh, it's going to. I don't want to get on the bike. How many times we gotta do this? Where I get on the bike by accident, like a complete nincompoop. Whatever. We learned that from that one plasma grunt. That's a. Uh, Full idiot and stupid makes nincompoop and get off the bike. Just, just get off the bike. I, I'm sorry. This the bike in this game is just. I, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just I am not good at using it. Anywho, the crater goes further in. So that cave area was kind of a red herring. The actual crater itself is this area. This kind of foresty area. So you can kind of get an idea of it. It used to be this cave-like area, but then. Uh, Eons and eons of years ago, that this, uh, supposedly, this meteor came down containing a Pokemon, and just, BAM! And it just, uh, this crater was formed, and obviously, over time, the crater began to become fertile once again, and it, uh, began to give life. Uh, habitats for Pokemon, obviously, hinted by the grass here. Trees, grass... And Max Potions, the most natural of occurring things in nature. That's actually a really cool cliff. I like that. You never really see cliffs that, that uh, push you this way, that push you north. You always see them push you south, east, or west, but never north. Good props on that. I want to stay outside of the darker grass, because obviously those are more likely to have uh, encounters in them. But I want to get all the items here. There is one particular item I really want, and that's going to like that's gonna tie into this whole lore thing about the Pokemon that fell from the sky and everything. Hello. There it is. Ice Beam. Now I wanted this for a few reasons. A, if we go and look at it, it has an accuracy of 100%. So that's pretty much why I wanted it in the first place. 
Oh, sweet, they can both learn it. I mean, it makes sense. If they could both learn Blizzard, they should both be able to learn Ice Beam. So, bye-bye, Blizzard. Blizzard is more powerful move, granted. However, I am for the accuracy over the power. So, I would rather have an attack that actually hits, as opposed to an attack that will sometimes hit and do better damage. So, we're going to teach it to both Billy and Redults, and so they'll both have the other person for the duration, not to mention it has more PP by default anyways. I also realized that when I taught Renault, uh Waterfall slash Die for those earlier episodes, um, we got rid of Blizzard, which was dumb because I actually used a PP up on that Blizzard move, so oopsies. Oh, right, Repel's effect wore off. Ha. Uh, a Clefairy is in here, look at that. And again, Clefairy, think about it. It's like Mount Moon in Generation 1, where they think, like, Pokémon possibly came from the moon, hence Mount Moon. Clefairy evolves from a moonstone, so there's kind of this space-like theme going on here with this crater. Again, making sense, because the meteor that struck the Unova region before the Unova region, yada yada yada. Where's the Oxus? He should be here. <laughs> so, let's get our Max Repel back on. And so yeah, their levels can uh, waver, by but if I'm not mistaken, the highest level is level 65. Partially because I read that off Bubblepedia, since I was looking up where to find Ice Beam, because I was getting kind of frustrated that I couldn't find Ice Beam. And we will do one of these, because typically if the grass is shaking, it should give us more experience. Ah, yes! Look, it is Billy's long, long lost cousin. We're gonna call him... Uh... Builder. And yeah, see, Aldino can have a lot of health. Though in retrospect, that was a really dumb idea on me to even attempt this fight because <laughs> that's a lot of damage done to Sabo there. A lot of damage. Sabo is not our weakest by any long shot. He's level 70. He's actually our third strongest right now. But yeah, Adinos can give us a lot of experience, and I probably should have been using that to my advantage to kind of grind on them. Because Adinos, uh, in addition to Billy just being freaking awesome, I think I've touched on this briefly, but the main appeal of Adinos, especially in this generation, is that they're really, really good grinding tools. Um, they'll, always, um, they'll almost always appear in the shaky grass, and they give up a ton of experience, especially even if they're like, even if they're 20 levels below you, they'll still give off quite a significant amount of experience, so it's worth to fight Adinos in order to get uh, level ups and all that good stuff. Now, oh, here we go again with these random, like, here's this patch of nothing in here, like, come on, guys. You can put some trees in there? Come on, stop slacking. Put some trees. Oh, we also got Team 03 Psy Shock. Okay, did not know there's another team here. But that is all good. Alright, so I think we've done a full wraparound of the area. Which is problematic because I want to, you know, get to the top over here. Oh, hello. Well, let's move through here. And... Hello? Okay, go down here. What? Okay, I'm confused. Well, we'll figure it out eventually. If I have to cut away for any reason while I'm doing this to figure this out, I'll probably do so, so we don't have to spend a lot of time here, because we've already explored most of this uh, forest area with the giant chasm, so there's really no more need to continue on wandering about like I'm doing... What the heck am I doing? I am going in circles. I am going in circles. Okay. Guys, could put another tree in there. You could have put another tree in there. But you didn't. Did you? There's like no way in there. What? That can't be right. You should be able to get in there. Shouldn't you? Hmm. Okay, we're back. I'm forgetting things like left and right here. There's a specific reason as to why we can't get up there yet. And don't fail me now, Repel. And that's because I'm going the wrong way in this maze. It's a labyrinth. 
Okay, so... If I'm not mistaken, doesn't maze mean, like, there's any way out, and labyrinth means there's, like, one set way you need to go, or something like that? Anyways, we need to get to the center of this area. So... The center... Is there. That's where we need to go. So, let's go right here. <laughs> so remember we found Ice Beam and all that stuff? Well, there's a reason for that. And now, a snow has covered the entire crater itself. In doing so, that's freed up our way to get into this inner cave. So then... First things for oh wait, I actually I already healed Sabo. Right. Okay. Here we go. Hey there, buddy. I wasn't sure I wasn't sure if I was gonna say hello or hey there, and I kind of just muddled it all together. Muddled it all together. There's nothing over there, according to the dowsing machine, but you could totally surf in here if you wanted to. This, everyone, is Kiram. Kiram is the discarded body of the original Pokémon that Zekrom and Reshiram both came from. This is the original form, in a way, of the Pokémon that fell from that meteor that caused that crater to appear. And we're... gonna fight it. Because... As the third legendary dragon, it kind of completes the whole Tau trilogy of these dragons. Reshiram and Zekrom are supposed to represent yin and yang, and Kiram itself kind of represents this absence of yin and yang, if I'm not mistaken. So, it being the original form, and kind of a null shell of its former self, hence the ice type. The ice typing also kind of keeps it in check with the other two typings, it's weak to ground, I don't know why, but they just really like to hammer that in. It is a unique idea, though, being an Ice Dragon, meaning that the main thing that does affect dragons, Ice-type moves, doesn't work on this dragon as well. As well, you can kind of see its body looks like it's in shambles. It looks like it used to be connected to something much greater, but it's been siphoned off from that power. That power being both Zekrom and Reshiram. And of course, we have Zekrom in our party, our good pal Erdrick. So let's see how this goes. Are we ready to catch Reshiram? Wait, no. No, we're not. And has Reshiram. Can't catch Reshiram. Can't catch Reshiram. He's not here. We're gonna catch Kiram. Behold Kiram! One thing that's really cool, actually, is that Wallace is the same battle theme that plays for Zekrom and Reshiram's fight that you would have at the top of End's Castle. There's this extra little bass part that's added into the music that makes it just a little bit different, that makes it kind of cool to fight this particular dragon Pokémon. And I do like this legendary theme. I'm glad that it wasn't used for all the legendaries, but uh, the main legendary theme, as we found out with Kabolian, kind of sucks. So, it's cool to hear this one again, and maybe we'll hear it... There we go. It's cool to hear this one again, especially with that little uh, change-up in the whole uh, dynamic of it. Alright, so Sabo, let's see how much damage you can do the Kiram here. That's not too bad. You're probably going to faint, though, sorry to say. And, oh... Oh, 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 nice, nice, nice. All right, so let's see if... Okay, it's asleep. Perfecto. Let's see some flamethrowers here. And yes, I'm going to try to capture Kiram. If we have to use our Master Ball, I will do that. There's no other legendaries I particularly want to catch in this playthrough, so if everything goes to bust, we're going to use the Master Ball just to get it over with. Master Ball, as you should know, it's uh, instant capture, does not matter what their HP is, what their status is, but we're going to try our darndest to try to catch it the more old-fashioned way, so to speak. Alright, so it's fast asleep, its health's pretty low, I'm kind of hesitant to do another attack. I'll try it. Alright, please don't... 
Perfect. Okay, if it's health can stay. Oh shoot. Ah shoot. And that's a very powerful ice type move. I believe that is uh, Kiram's. Uh, oh, hoo -hoo. of course, being an ice type move, Sabo can withstand it. I believe that Glaciate is Kiram's uh, answer to Fusion Flare and uh, Fusion Bolt that Z Reshiram and Zekrom had, respectively. I don't really like using the term respectively, but uh, there you have it. Okay, so let's use a Hyper Potion on Sabo. So I want to get another Yawn off if I can. Sabo should be faster than this thing, though. Okay, it's imprisoned itself. I. Okay. And another yawn off. Now comes the part where we're going to try to start catching it. So here we go. Oh, okay. Well, it's a Dragon Ball, so Sabo might be gone after that, because that's a very, very powerful move. One of the most powerful Dragon-type moves, I believe. Yeah. Okay. You did your job, Sabo. Hopefully Kiram's going to fall asleep soon. Hey, Kiram. Check it out. It's one of your hands that got split off from you. Zekrom. Go, Erdrick. Claim your old body back. Alright, let's see. Let's go with... Um, let's start with... A, uh, well, Quick Ball's out of the question. Start with a Dex Ball. Nothing doing. Alright. Uh, bye, Erdrick. Holy cow! Holy cow! That is amazing! Erdrick, uh, uh, I, I... That was pathetic clapping and it probably popped on the mic, so I won't do that again. Okay, you could easily take care of Urgic any time you want, Kiram, but you're kind of just, uh, wasting time, I guess. There we go, I kind of figured that was going to happen. Why do you keep doing that? Like, wh what does that, what does that help you with? There we go, okay. Bye, Erzrick. You survived much longer than you needed to, but my gosh, was that not amazing. Alright, so sorry to be cutting in and out, but I just didn't, like, I, you don't want to see this whole thing, and if it's just going to be me going, ah, why can't we catch it the whole time, it's not going to be super interesting. So we're out of, uh... Dust Balls and Timer Balls at this point, so if this next Yawn Tactic doesn't work, we're going to have to just go with the Master Ball, I think. Lily's down, uh, Erdrick's down, so yeah, probably for the best. Oh, oh. Yes! Alright! Did not have to use the Master Ball after all! Good job, everyone! Kira's data is added to the Pokedex! Dragon Ice, it's apparently 9 feet tall. I'm assuming it won't crash over like that. Uh... No, we're, we're just not gonna worry about it. Did I not read its, its data entry? Did it just say 9 feet tall and I just didn't look at the rest of it? Like a dumb butt? Its body can produce ultra-cold air. Its body is frozen. Well then, that's just delightful. Alright, I'll meet you back over at Pokemon Center where we heal up, and then we're gonna take on our other thing for this episode. Bit of a longer episode, and these episodes have been a bit long recently, but I want to keep these two legend things together, because I feel like it's gonna be a fun time for everybody. So, see ya in just a quick shake of a screen. 
All right, we're back in the Pokemon Center, but in what city, you might wonder? Well, there is one last thing that I want to take on before we go and face the Pokemon League once again. And in order to prep for that, let's put our strongest Pokemon, Renault, in the front. Because it's time. And maybe we're going to not win this, but you know what? Let's try our darndest this time. Music might not sound familiar, but we are in fact in Undela Town. The music here plays differently if it's in the autumn, spring, or winter seasons, so that's why it's playing so, like, calmly right now. Just very calm and all that. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we did that. Coolio, coolio. Most importantly, though, it's time for... This. I do want a Pokemon to have a match. Are you prepared to be my opponent? More than ever, I'd have to hope. Our team's not the ideal levels, I'd say, but I think we're close enough. Let's do it. Okay, time to take on Champion Cynthia for real this time. And if I fail, it's my own fault instead of my own stupidity. So, it's still my fault regardless, but you know. Her first Pokemon is always this thing, I hate this thing, I don't like this thing, I don't care for this thing, this thing is garbage in my opinion. So, let's just get rid of it right away. If Renault's Surf worked like it did last time, which was freaking amazing, then this should be no pro- okay. If his Surf worked like <laughs> last time, I mean still, he got pretty far down, if the Spirit Team's only using, uh... Double team, and then bye bye Spiritomb, never come back please, I hate you, have a fun time doing whatever you do. Alright, well that's down, hooray, next gonna come up this thing annoying thing, Renault can't deal with that because it's ground type, of course. Let's go with, um, hmm. wait, because ground type, because electric type, I'm a dumb. We're gonna try Alfonso, because Alfonso can resist a lot of the electric type moves. I had a friend of mine that said, you know it would be even worse if the Electros was holding a balloon. And I went, well, if it's holding a balloon, that doesn't make any sense. Doesn't it already have Levitate? Yes. To add salt to the wound. And I was just like, I hate you. <laughs> Alright, let's see how Outrage does. Oh, that's pretty decent. Not great, mind you. And Alfonso's gonna get confusion later on. But still, it's pretty okay, I'd say. As long as we can take this thing out, I'm fine with that. This thing is just... Ugh, let's see, does Cynthia actually have healing items on here? I want to say she probably does. It, it wouldn't make sense if she didn't, in all honesty. But we'll have to see. Ah, uh, yeah, let's use our Ultra Ball. Obviously, it's what we want to use. Let's use a Hyper Potion on Alfonso for right now. We'll see what Cynthia does. Because she attacks, then uh, we're in the clear. Oh, she has the full restore. I knew it. I knew it. Alright, cool. Good call, good call. I mean, Alfonso's still very confused, so there's really no reason for us to continue fighting with Alfonso, but, you know... We'll try our darndest. Yeah, maybe not a good idea. Okay, just keep doing that, keep doing that. Ideally, if I make her waste her, uh... If I make her waste her full restores on this guy, then everything should be golden here from on out, I'd say. Hopefully, maybe, sort of? Maybe? <laughs> you really like that flamethrower move, don't you? Alright, Alfonso, can you snap out a can- Oh! Let's see, you gonna snap a- uh... We'll try fighting. No, not snapped out of confusion. Alright, well, at least he got one off. Okay, perfect. We'll have to figure out who our next Pokemon's gonna be. We're gonna want... Oh, what? Did it, it did even less? That's interesting. Alright, so who to use next? Alfonso's down for the count. Um... Lily! Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. If we can use Lily, get her Italian move off. Ah, perfect! Okay, let's see. How much damage will this do? Ho ho ho! Yes! Okay, Alfonso was the scapegoat, getting that off. Perfecto! Alright, Lucario. Okay, we have a perfect counter for this this time. Sabo. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Sabo has the better speed, and if Lucario is built the way I think he is, he's probably not going to have really good special defense. So let's find out with our flamethrower attack here. Since Lucario is unfortunately part steel, that's going to do a lot of damage. Hot diggity dog, Sabo! Hot diggity dog! I mean, he looks like a dog, so that's kind of why I'm saying it, but also because you're on fire, and also, what the heck? That was a lot of damage that that move just done there. Well, we'll use a... Oh, wait, is that how... is that how Aura Sphere is supposed to work? Is that why Lucario, when he gets more damage in the Smash games, actually, like... Okay, that's making sense then, why it did so much damage, because he was at so low health. Okay, that, that's, that's kind of neat. I don't like it, but it's neat. And Lucario's okay in my book, I like playing as him. He's fun, he's a cool character in Pokémon tournaments. I like playing as other characters in Pokémon tournament, mind you, but he's a cool, he's a good, he's a good addition. Alright, bye Lucario. Alright, Coolio, I am super pumped about this battle now. Alright, I forgot her last three Pokémon are. But we're going to find out, and Sabo with level 71, so that is all dandy. And thanks to the leftovers, I'm glad we put those on Sabo. Good call. Alright, Melodic, okay. Melodic is... I don't think Melodic's part ground. I could be wrong on that, though. If I'm wrong on that, this is I'm going to pay the price for it right here. But we'll find out. It's the beauty Pokemon. This is the, the Melodics are super hard to raise. People who re raise with Melodics are really awesome. Okay, it is not part ground. Okay, if it was part ground, that this wouldn't have worked. All right, let's see how much that does. It did no Blizzard though, which is a problem if it, if that actually went off, but it didn't. So that's exactly why I didn't want to ha keep Blizzard on Renault and Billy because of the uh, because of the whole thing of uh, it not always hitting. There we go. I, my train of thought was there, but it was going through some swishy tracks to get to the station. All right, let's see how Dragon Claw does. Okay, Earthquake. Well, bye bye Erdrick. I don't like Garchomp, though. Garchomp, no. No thanks to Garchomp. Melodic, Lucario, okay. The other three Pokemon that we've seen so far, get out. I'm sorry, I, was, I, I don't like Garchomp. It's a other. It's a character in Pokémon tournaments, and it's just, it's it's a land shark. Like I don't like. I get the idea, but I don't like. It's not my thing. All right, Ice Beam. This should do a lot because this is also part Ground type. Hopefully, it should do a lot. Ah, thank goodness. All right, last Pokémon of Cynthia's. And we're all got to level 76. Good job, good buddy. We have gone a long way through this journey. Haha. <laughs> Bravery is our last Pokemon. Okay, so half our team I dislike. This Pokemon is admittedly okay. Bravery is a flying type. It's a unique uh, Pokemon to Unova region. It evolves from Rufflet. I believe we saw Rufflet back on a Victory Road. And I believe we can also catch them on Route 10. It evolves level 55, though. When's the last time I was driven to a corner like this? Probably in the last generation. Let's go watch uh, some Let's Plays of, uh... Ah, Brave Bird, though. Brave Bird does a lot of damage. Want some Let's Plays? Gen 4? Chug Conroy? Critical hit. Ah, gosh darn. It does, however, have a lot of recoil, though, so that's the good part about it. So we could kind of use this to our advantage, in fact. In fact, if we use Lily right here, we could probably use a Max Revive on Billy. Since we have... Uh, do I want to use it right now? We'll, we'll save it. We'll save it. We got some regular revives we can use. We'll use a revive. If it does Brave Bird again, more power to us. Lily's probably a little faint from that, obviously, but the... Perfect! The recoil and the rocky helmet will do it in. So if we can just keep doing this, we could probably get a really cheap strategy going here. And actually, Lily survived, so that is even better. That being said... I think Lily might be able to take this on. If Lily can just do a get Ah, yes! Aha! Well charge to do d enough damage. Perfect! The vibe bravery, we beat Champion Cynthia! <laughs> okay, yeah, it's fine. My heart is pounding so hard because I had such a heated battle with you. You really are a great trainer. Thank you very much, Cynthia. It means a lot to us. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. That was beyond my expectation. What an exceptional battle. 
You certainly bear resemblance to the trainer who faced Giratina. Oh, pardon me, I was just thinking out loud. I love being here in the spring and summer. I can't stay all year because there's so much to investigate in Sinnoh as well. You're a great trainer and it would make me happy to see you again sometime. So I believe we leave since it's the autumn season. She will no longer be here. Cynthia will return back in the summer in the spring season, as she said. I believe the summer season as well. In the spring season, you can refight her to your heart's content. So you can keep fighting her. She's another great way, especially for high-level Pokemon, to do some decent uh, training to get some good experience. That said, that's all the time we have for this episode. This is a bit longer episode, but I hope you enjoyed it all the same. I hope you're enjoying Pokemon Sun and Moon as well. I heard Cynthia's in that game to fight. I hope you enjoy her team. I wonder if we'll use Minova you know, Pokemon. I kind of doubt it, but it'd be kind of cool. Bravery, Lucario, and Melodic are great Pokemon. Those Pokemon are awesome. Spiritomb, Electros, and Garchomp, dumb. Don't. No. I'm sorry, it's just no. <laughs> Anywho's, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, please consider hitting the like button below. If you want to see more content from me, you can hit that subscribe button. Always helps out. Pokemon white and black version. If you can find them on the DS, or pick it up, I would say. But I'm sure right now you're a bit more interested in Pokemon Sun and Moon, which just released today. If you haven't picked the Pokemon Sun and Moon, I would go and check that out. And enjoy the 20th anniversary of the Pokemon series. Otherwise, please have a wonderfully great day, and I will see you on the next one. We are almost done with Pokemon White version, and there's just one last thing for us to do, so we'll be taking those on in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderfully great day.